What is it that you really, really want? What is it that you cannot do without? I've noticed that from the time I was little on, I could answer that question differently year after year. When I was little, as you heard me mention the kids, I always wanted Legos, but some years I would want a bicycle or I'd want a Nintendo Game Boy, if you guys can still remember those, they've long since passed. Or when I was in high school, Letterman's jacket or more recently, a new cell phone or a flat screen TV, things like that. Now, admittedly, as I've grown older and matured a little, uh, these things have certainly not been as material. I've noticed that Matthew 6 is very true, that well, rust and moth did not destroy these things. Playing with my toys and uh, losing them outside, certainly they've gone away. Well, and I thought about how the, my thoughts have changed. The things that I've wanted through the years have certainly changed. And anymore, now I want safety for my family. I want good health for my parents. I want, I'm happy my sister's baby came safely, and, I'm, and I thank the Lord for that. And I thought to myself, well, what is it that you really want? And how would you answer that question? How would you answer the question, what is it I really want? For some of you, it might be a cure. The diagnosis of a cure when you go to the doctor. It might be that your senses return to you. And the, the body you had when you were 20 years old, that your body would still move that way. It might be for world peace, that life would just be easier. It might be in more spiritual moments, that God would bring faith to everybody in the world and that they would have a living, thriving faith in Jesus Christ. Whatever the answer may be, I hope as Christians that you have brought it to God in prayer. God gives us a wonderful, a tremendous opportunity to come to him. To come to him as though a wife comes to her husband, as a husband comes to his wife. God gives us the opportunity to talk to him about everything that's on our heart, that's on our minds. He gives us the opportunity to talk to him when we're in the most private place, when we're in the most public place. He invites us to come to him with our great things, even with our small things. And not only does he want us to come to him, but he commands us to come to him. And maybe we sometimes miss that command. We see that in the second commandment. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. And, well, doesn't that just have to do with not using God's name in vain? Well, not completely, because if you follow the meaning, and if you look at the meaning of that command, God not only wants us to not misuse his name, but to use his name, to come to him in all our prayers and petitions, in every time that we are in need. And, in fact, Luther expands upon this in his large catechism. And he says, prayer is therefore as strictly and earnestly commanded as all other commandments, to have no other God, not to kill, not to steal, etc. Let no one think that it is all the same whether he pray or not, as vulgar people do, who grope in such delusions and ask, why should I pray? Who knows whether God heeds or will hear my prayer? If I do not pray, someone else will. And thus they fall into the habit of never praying, a frame of pretext as though we taught that there is no duty or need of prayer because we reject false and hypocritical prayers. Indeed, God does command us to pray. It is not just a desire he has. Certainly, he wants us to pray to him without compulsion. He wants us to come to him with all the troubles or all the joys that we have. But he also commands it. And he commands it because it is important that we come to God in prayer, that we come to him, and not only for the conversational aspect. When we pray to God, there is power in our prayer. And we may not understand that completely. But when we come to God, he doesn't just sit there. He doesn't just mull it over in his mind. God sees everything at once. He sees when we ask that request, but he's also seeing into the future. He's seeing into the past. He sees everything in the same time. And so when we ask for something in prayer, God is concerned about how it affects us. He has his plan. And sometimes he doesn't say yes to our prayers. And I think at times when God doesn't say yes to our prayers, that this is when we get in trouble as Christians. This is when we struggle. That although we have this gracious invitation of God, that when He doesn't immediately say yes to our prayers, we start to ask the question of why? Is He listening? Does He answer my prayer? John 14, 14. Jesus said, You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. 
So why doesn't God always say yes to our prayers? Why doesn't God always give us that what we want? Well, first, because God's not a genie. You don't just rub the side of the lamp and out he poofs and what do you wish? What do you desire? See, God looks at us as a father looks at his children. He looks at us as his own with concern and with care. And so everything we ask for, he knows, will not always benefit us. He knows that some of the things we ask for will not help our lives, will not be a blessing to us. And when we ask for those things, he won't say yes but out of His fatherly goodness and love. Now sometimes though, when God doesn't say yes, we start to wonder. We start to wonder if He will, if He's hearing us, or if He's able to. Satan takes the opportunity, when we have those questions in our mind, to plant more questions, to plant more doubts in our minds. Satan takes the opportunity that when we're already not, when we're already concerned, when our faith is struggling, to, to drive us further away. And he does this for a reason. He does this because prayer is our first line of defense. Prayer is our first line of defense against the devil, against his evil desires. See, right at the end of Ephesians chapter 6, Paul says to us, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. The reason he gives this is right after he gives us the, the command to suit up in the armor of God. The armor of protection. Because we are not fighting battles against flesh and blood, but against the powers of the spiritual world, the evil powers of Satan and his demons. And prayer is that first line of defense that we have against Satan and his demons. Prayer is the first line of defense that God gives us because prayer is not merely meant for us to request things of God. Prayer is not merely meant for an opportunity for us to tell God what we need. But it's also a time for Him to speak to us. In prayer, God also comes to us. He comes to us and speaks to our lives. He gives to us guidance. But have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered why? Why doesn't? Why doesn't he do the good things we pray for? Why doesn't he help my hearing so I'm able to sing and hear the notes again? 